Welcome to session number five. If you want the full hour, head on over to Patreon and check it out with the full commentary and all that kind of good stuff. So this time around, I'm going to be working on the teeth and the horns, I think, towards the end of it. But since the sketch was not very detailed in terms of the, the teeth area or the back area or underneath the, the cheeks, I decided to not bother importing it and just going off of feel and um, just coming up with something on the fly that kind of worked for what I wanted to do. So same thing as last time, um, breaking off pieces of geometry, filling the hole and then moving that new piece of geometry up a little bit so that there's enough of an edge for me to kind of build out and, and play around with. So once again, simple brushes, um, clay buildup, Damon standard, move tool, uh, move brush, all that kind of stuff. Um, and trying to figure out how the gums and, and I guess, I guess it would be technically the upper jaw but how the gum area fits in with the rest of the sculpt. So here I'm isolating the teeth just to give me a visual reference when I'm sculpting in the, um, the gums and stuff like that. Um, and I'm also going to try to figure out how to slot all that stuff in with the underfaces. So I hide the, the chin bone, which kind of looks like a mouth guard for the little guys and um, cleaning that up a little bit so it looks like it's supposed to slot in and not just smush their face in there. So um, building up some of the forms so that it looks like it's meant to be there. Uh, this is still, uh, still sculpting with symmetry on because I'm not getting too bogged down in the super, super fine detail of, of what's going on here. I'm still trying to just get a, a good base of forms that um, are solid enough visually that I can go back in and put on some more finer detail and things like that. Um, so building up the chin area of the little underfaces, adding in some more wrinkly bits and smoothy bits. and uh, trying to see if a different shader will help. Um, I tend to use different shaders. I like to use the shiny shaders when I'm sculpting in ZBrush because it gives me a, a good view of the highlights and the, the, the roundness or the sharpness of a, a specific object. Um, but for like production renders or, or renders that I wanna show off, I'll usually use like a clay material in Keyshot because I, I find that it gives you the most realistic type of render. And especially when you're creating something that's supposed to be like bone, um, a matte material is much more realistic than a shiny one. So here I'm uh, making some teeth. I think there's a insert mesh that has teeth in it. I think there's like a, a dragon insert mesh that has a bunch of dragon teeth, but I like to make things on my own. So uh, I just, I'm just taking a, a sphere and pushing it around till I get a general shape that I like and then duplicating that and then uh, tweaking it a little bit and then duplicating that and then du duplicating it again and duplicating it again and moving it back. So um, here I'm making some canines. If I was smart, I would have brought up some uh, references of, of actual teeth instead of just making it up on my own. I find that even if you're working with a, a fantastic creature or something out of your imagination, it helps to have real world references so that even if it's something that you've made up, like if you sort of base the look or the forms on, on forms that occur in nature, it sometimes gives your sculpt a little bit more believability. Like, even though this is a really crazy looking creature, this is something that might have occurred in nature at some point. So um, that's why I like to use references uh, for pretty much anything, like if it's a building or if it's a mechanical thing or if it's a robot, 
even though I'm drawing a lot from my imagination, if I can base parts of it on a general feel of something that has occurred in nature or something um, that's, that exists in real life, I feel like it gives your whatever it is you're making a little bit more of a solid basis. So there's one little tiny molar at the back there. Um, I think that's it for the teeth. I, I might add more teeth if I feel it necessary, but I don't know. I think, I think that's a good number of teeth. I don't know. I haven't really figured out the biology of this creature. <laughs> and the canines are, are kind of stubby. They're not as pointy as you see for like, you know, a tiger or like a vampire with huge canines. Um, but I, I still think it looks kind of devious and deadly. Doing some more inner gum work on uh, some palette work. And I guess that end in the back there would be where the, the spine bones would slot in. So um, maybe I'll go back and, and make it look like there's a hole there for the spinal column. But I don't know. Hopefully when, when this is printed out, people are not going to be displaying it upside down. <laughs> <clears throat> so here I'm just plugging up uh, some of the holes that are left. Um, I think I'm going to actually fill that cavity with a, a, a solid object at some point or a dynamesh sphere and, and move it around so that it fills that cavity because I, I don't need that hollowed out when I get it 3D printed, but um, for now I'm, I'm just making sure that all the, the holes are filled up with something. So that's what that extension was there. Um, and now I think I'm moving on to the horns. The horns are a little tricky because once again, it's something that I would probably grab a real reference for like a goat horn or a, or a deer horn or something like that. or. A, I guess ibex. Do ibexes have horns? See, I don't even know animals. Um, but I would grab a reference for a horn to see what they look like in real life because, um, you know, some of them have neat little twists and, and segments that are pretty cool and stuff like that. And maybe when it comes time to do the more detailed work with the, the actual uh, creases and features and things like that, I'll bring up some references. I'll make a reference sheet for me to work off of. Um, but for now, I'm just kind of guessing at the forms that I like, I'm going to be uh, cutting in some uh, segmentation that I think looks cool enough. Um, you know, that's the, the, the danger and the, uh, the gift and the curse of working on your own stuff. Um, you know, I can make up things as I go along, but I still want it to look like it could have occurred. In, in nature. So, I don't know, this is just an impression of what I think are look cool with the, the segments and stuff. And this is all with the Damien standard brush, using that to cut in those grooves. I also use the Orb Crack brush, which is, um, which you can find easily online. Um, but that's from uh, one of the Blizzard environmental artists. He, he has a number of great ZBrush brushes that he's released to the public so that you can give it a shot and use them for your own productions and stuff like that. Um, really good stuff. The Orb, the Orb Crack brush has been used on everything. Like everybody has that one, so check it out. Um, once again, changing shaders. This is the brass shader that I'm pretty fond of. gives me a good sense of what's happening with the, the roundness or the sharpness of an object. And these of course are going to get more detail uh, in the next, well, when I get to that step. And I'll probably turn symmetry off, so I, I could leave it on? I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out when I get to that point. Um, but. Um, Looking at it in the context of the entire sculpt, the horns look pretty good. Here I'm just testing out a bunch of different shaders just to see what it might look like um, from various angles with various lighting setups and saving. Always save. <laughs> um, and that about does it. And here is a nice, clean, 
Keyshot production render. Keyshot is my favorite renderer at this point because you don't have to think too much. You just kind of set it and forget it and let Keyshot do its thing. So if you want the full hour of this session, check my, out my Patreon. You can check out previous sessions there as well. Uh, you can get the full commentaries um, and uh, save them for later if you if you don't have an hour or two to sit down and, and see what I'm doing. So, um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll check you back here for session number six. All right, bye.